this. We got a bucket change to do here. Gonna be easy. I don't know if I can hit the slot there. The better. Come on. Get in there. Well, all right, look at him. I think I'm gonna like that thing. Anyway, we got a little footing to dig over here in Norman. two-day deal or not. There's not a lot to dig here, but see how it goes. Kind of tight quarters up against another building. some pretty good dirt. Ought to be an easy dig. Like I said, I don't think we're going to get in a big hurry. We've got safety meetings and stuff. If I did any work at this school, I don't know that I've ever been to this one. Uh, but a lot of the concrete companies I work for do a lot of school work. So, been to Norman a few times digging on schools from different places. Some of them seem like 20 years ago, some of them maybe 10. But. good to be working that's for sure I mean it's been we've been kind of getting enough rain to kind of scare people away from digging and so you know I've got this quick connect on now and uh, not even been using it I guess I won't wear it out too fast if I don't use it. So. Anyway, this is gonna make make for some nice stuff here. I think we got sand underneath it. <laughs> we got a sandy material down under this red slick top, so it'll come out of the ditch real nice. Uh, I'm still getting used to the difference in the bucket radius is different a little bit but really not bad when 
just look at that. Look, look, just look at that dirt. Like butter. <clears throat> I'm not sure this is, I don't like this footing goes very deep. Probably deeper than that, but I'm going to wait to make sure. <clears throat> Anyway, another day, another footing. But, 
it's not like I'm screwing everything up. It's not that big a deal, really. So, I don't want to go much deeper here. I think that's probably... We want to leave enough dirt where they do that step up that they got uh, something to tie their forms into also. So if you dig the sidewalls all the way up to the step, then they have to box form their footing. So you want to leave the dirt up high enough on both sides where you do those steps so that they don't have to spend extra time forming up uh, concrete. It's just, you know, it's a lot easier to stick a board across the, between the ditch walls than it is to have to actually form up boxes on both sides. Anyway, things like that you kind of pick up as you go, you learn, you, you got to keep them in mind though. Uh, some of these guys just automatically think that you should know that. Well, there's some of them that will explain it all to you real clear. And there's some, you, you kind of got to watch out for them also. I mean, they're kind of doing other things. they got other things on their mind, so they, they might miss it. But I try to cover them on that. Try to make sure that we leave here with uh, as little problems as we can. But this is a this is an interesting dig. So we go from super shallow well, I'll say super. We go from fairly shallow to pretty deep, actually. So I've already dug up behind where we're sitting here. Uh, I've dug up to a point I thought I was safe at being able to straddle the ditch without collapsing it. But if I would have just kept digging all the way to the end of this, that would have caused me to have to take that fence out. And they don't want that fence taken out. I mean, that's a safety, that's a big safety issue, especially with the playground. one of those kids gets out here on this job site and gets hurt, well, you know, it would be a bad thing. <clears throat> but anyway. So I'm digging out a spot footing here. Um, after I dig the spot footing, I'll go ahead and dig that right hand side down a little bit more. There is a method to the way I do this, and, you know, I, I try to explain it best I can. Some of it you just got to be in it a little bit to understand what I'm talking about. But you just got to keep in mind what you're building as a concrete form. You're not digging a ditch. You're building forms for concrete. And uh, that is, you know, That's different than digging pipeline. That's different than digging water line ditches or something like that. This is a little different stuff. I mean, a lot of those, a lot of a lot of places where you dig a hole, it doesn't matter if you dig six inches over or four inches over or something like that. But when 
when you start looking at how much concrete costs, and I've talked about that before, uh, it can get pretty expensive if you get to mess around and dig out too much. And I have done it before. I mean, they, they make allowances for concrete loss. So, you know, they, they know it's going to happen, but on a good day I can save somebody a lot of money with concrete. Soil conditions, you know, that's got a lot to do with it also. about done with this side of the building. Uh, taking a minute. We've got, I think that other side over there is deep. It may step down a little bit deeper. I don't know for sure. This guy's checking my boxes to make sure they're big enough. Kind of giving me a little bit of an idea of what we need to clean up here. Um, <laughs> a while ago this guy thought he had messed up on the grade. But what it is, there's a one foot four step Everywhere there's a step, it steps one foot four. And that's actually the height of the footing, too. So, so well, it's got to be pretty close because we got uh, this number of steps and this many, you know, had to be, had to be pretty close. So we figured out he was right, he had it right. Uh, it's a good thing he had it right because it would really be tough to get back down there without filling this in. Um, uh, it's probably possible to do it, but it wouldn't be easy. show you how I ended up having to finish this one. Uh, I'm straddling the ditch right now. And there just ain't a whole lot of other way to do it. I mean, we could have dug from that corner all the way up to the top. But, they're kind of limited on room up there too, so we made the best of it. I think it's going to work out good. Turned out pretty neat. But I'll show you here in a second how I get off the ditch. So you can see my backhoe's at a pretty good angle to the ditch, maybe almost 45. And you can you can do this at a closer angle. In other words, your front tire would be over the ditch. Uh, but I don't really like doing it that way on a situation like this because I'm I'm kind of unlevel. And when you get off the ditch, it's harder to, well, I'll show you. Right now, my back tire is really close to the ditch, so it doesn't take a whole lot of movement to get me away from it. If I 
if I was more parallel with the ditch, it would be a little bit further. My back tire would be hanging way over the ditch. I'm going to say we pretty much got this one done. So I'm going to get the heck out of here. So the way I'm, way I'm going to do this is I'm going to pick the back of up, pivot. I'm going to slide over a little ways. And I'm kind of sitting on a bad spot, so I'm going to move the bucket a little bit past center on the pivot. It gives me a little bit more balance point to work with. Balance, balance point changes once your boom and your bucket goes past center. Now I'm going to start leaning to the left, but I am way off of the ditch at this point, so pretty safe. Now the rod busters can have this whole side.
That's a pretty quick bucket change right there. Anyway, I'm ready to load this thing up, go to the house, I guess. 